Hello, my name is Custódio Peixeiro. I'm from Instituto de Telecomunicações and Instituto Superior Técnico, University of Lisbon. This is the introductory module of the online course on microstrip antennas. Microstrip is one of the printed circuit board, PCB, technologies used, used to fabricate microwave antennas and circuits. It is originated in the strip line. There are other PCB technologies, such as the slot line and the coplanar line. The microstrip antenna the microstrip line consists in a metallic strip with width W, printed on a dielectric substrate with relative primitivity epsilon R and thickness H, backed by a metallic ground plane. It supports a quasi-TEM mode and can guide signals from DC up to approximately 100 GHz. It is non-dispersive up to a few gigahertz. It is compact, lightweight and low cost. Moreover, it is easy to integrate it in passive and active components. Due to its non-homogeneous configuration, the analysis of a macro-strip line is not easy. However, in the quasi-static approximation, empirical and analytical equations are defined for the relative permittivity of the homogeneous equivalent configurations, epsilon r e, as a function of epsilon r and of the h, the w to h ratio. One formula is used for w lower than h and the other for w larger than h. The idea of using macrostrip structures as antennas was proposed by Desha and C-Shock in 1953. This idea was inspired on the unwanted radiation losses of the macrostrip line introduced one year before by Greek and Engelmann. Not surprisingly, Desha, C-Shock, Greek and Engelmann work at the same institution, the USA Federal Telecommunication Laboratories. Only in 1974 and 1975, more than 20 years later, the initial practical macrostrip antennas were proposed by Mewson and Howell. Apparently, this delay was caused by the lack of good substrates. Two important milestones in the history of macrostrip patch antennas are the workshop held at the New Mexico State University Las Cruces in November 1979 and the January 1981 typical special issue of the IEEE transactions on antennas and propagation. In 1980, Ball and Bartia authored the first microstrip antenna book. The first microstrip antenna handbook was edited by James and Hall in 1989. The microstrip antenna field had reached maturity. As we will see later, since then, there has been a continuous and consistent tendency of increase in microstrip antenna, research and development activities. The most simple form of a microstrip antenna consists in a metallic patch printed on a dielectric substrate backed by a metallic ground plane. A feed supplies RF power to the patch. The microstrip antenna is a typical microwave antenna, used roughly from 1 GHz up to 100 GHz. There are many simple canonical geometries, such as rectangular, square, circular, elliptical, triangular, and some very complex non-canonical ones. As we will see later, there are many different feeding techniques for microstrip antennas. Patch with, zero di with linear dimensions in the range lambda 0 over 4 to lambda 0 over 2 and thickness 10 to 50 micrometer. Substrate with linear dimensions at least three times the patch dimension and thickness in the range 0 0.005 lambda 0 to 0 0.2 lambda 0. 
ground plane with the same dimensions of the substrate and the same thickness of the patch. It is necessary to point out that the indicated limits are not strict, they are just typical. There are several techniques used to feed macro-strip antennas. We will describe and analyze briefly the three most common ones. The micro-strip feed line is, is the natural and the simplest way to feed a macro-strip antenna. It is fabricated using the same PCB technique used to fabricate the antenna. It is particularly good for arrays. However, only one substrate is used with, which means it cannot be optimized as the antenna and the feed line impose contradictory requirements. A compromise must be reached. The coaxial probe is also a very popular way of feeding a macro-strip antenna. It provides easy control of the input impedance and the patch and the feeding system is separated by the ground plane. However, it is mechanically complex, drilling and soldering required, and impedance matching is difficult for thick substrates. The slot or aperture coupled feed can provide large bandwidth and, as two substrates are used, they can be optimized independently. However, it uses a complex multilayer structure and originates radiation in the back side of the ground plane. Here is the list of some of the most typical macro strip antenna advantages. Low profile and lightweight. Low cost. Easy fabrication PC, because it is fabricated using PCB mass production techniques. Planar but can be made conformal to non-planar geometries. Easy integration of passive and active components. Easy implementation of arrays. Flexibility in terms of radiation pattern and gain. Flexibility in terms of polarization. There are also some typical macro strip antenna disadvantages, such as narrow band, low efficiency, lower power capability, tolerance problems, mostly at millimeter waves. Good substrates are expensive. The tremendous research effort carried out in the last 30 years, 30 to 40 years, has allowed to overcome most of these typical drawbacks. Macro-strip antennas are used in many applications in, the, in different systems. In mobile communication systems, macro-strip antennas are used in base stations and at sex points, but also in mobile terminals such as smartphones and laptops. In satellite system, macro-strip antennas are used in DBS and GPS, as well as in remote sensing. In biomedical systems, macro-strip antennas are used in a wide variety of ingestible, implanted and wearable devices, as well as in hyperthermia. In RFID systems, macro-strip antennas are used both, both in the reader and as tags. With the advent of the Internet of Things, a huge number of small wireless sensors will be needed. Macro-strip antennas will, again, have a role to play. Macro-strip patch antennas has been probably the most rapidly developing topic of the antenna field in the last 30 years. As we have seen, macro-strip patch antennas have been used in many applications, mainly in telecommunications, but also in other areas. The last push arrived with the wireless communications revolution. The analysis of the number of macro-strip antenna papers published in the IEEE transactions on antennas and propagation reveals an oscillatory behavior with a consistent tendency to increase. That happens with the absolute number of papers and, above all, with the overall percentage. We can therefore conclude that research and development in the macro-strip antenna field seems to be more active than ever. Goodbye.